to stand out. Well, it's, not, it's not exactly going to disrupt the race because the others are a minute behind. But hey, you, you can see how the penalty system works. So they've obviously done some, some heinous crime that's um, deserved them to be called out for 15 seconds. So when they get to the portage, they'll be notified of that. I guess their portage crew have already been notified. And then have to go into the sin bin, the box of shame, as they call it. It's like having your wrist slapped at school, and they'll have to sit there, or stand there for 15 seconds, till the clock counts down, and then they'll be allowed to progress. I don't know what they've done to deserve this, we'll try and inform you later on. But it works like that, in, in, according to the new uh, rules, that if you do something wrong uh, out there on the course, you are uh, doomed to to have a penalty, and the penalty is uh, on you on the on the portage instead of disqualification. That was the previous uh, in the previous rules, the only way to to uh, get a uh, paddler. This is much more fair. And that uh, has affected races uh, positively. Okay, for it's, it's for a course infringement. We're not sure exactly what course infringement, but they're both going to have to stand out for 15 seconds. It absolutely makes no difference because they're both standing out. If only one of these got the penalty and has to wait for 15 seconds, that changes coming past. And it's a big tear up in the junior women. Catherine Ross leading from the two Hungarians. I'm not sure what's caused that flurry. I wish you could see it. I wish you could see that. But it's Rika, um, Dora Solion, Rika Pito. And it does look like they might be trying to work Catherine Rask over. They've put her on the outside of the group, which is the right thing to do. For them, not for Catherine, obviously. Yeah, but they are, do they are doing it very, very relaxed and trying to get in cleanly, get away. It's France, Germany, and Spain there, I think. It's only got the Germany and Spain right. I didn't see who was in the red boat, so apologies for that. But uh, they're off and away. The two leaders back together. And they're going to continue their procession around the course. Coming to the portage now. Clearly, it looks like the uh, knee injury she had back in uh, Bohin has cleared up. She's running much better than she was there. And she's out on her own. The second boat just coming in now. The other Hungarian, Regina Bonyai. Following her to the portage. Looks like about a 15 second gap, maybe. So that's Giada Bogato getting in now. Setting in. Rushing off. Legs and knee a bit. Leg your knee like that. Boat fills up a little bit of water. Not ideal. But she's away cleanly. Stay in a boat on a beach like that. It's all about what sort of depth you, go, you dare to go to before you can get These guys obviously don't have to worry about their rudders, but their paddles do dig deep to run a kayak paddle. So it's all a fine decision. And there's an overview. Of course, the first, bo the first boat and turn you can see up there is the short lap, the final lap. And beyond that, in the distance, is the long standard lap that they do on all their other rounds before that final one. You can see how far out from the edge they are. And there you go with the leader of the juniors. Boat 41, Giada Bogato, as she was in Bohem, out on her own. And looking like she's got this pretty much sewn up already. Building a bit of an atmosphere in the crowd here. We've got the, the music going. The crowd swelling. 
not individually, you understand, as a mass, the stands are gradually filling up. I'm partly with athletes and um, officials from the team, but the general public are pouring in too. And even our live feed on the screen is shut out now. I know it's back on. So it looks like the junior women are just about to come up for their second portage. So the first out is... Um, that's Rika Pito, Victoria Solyam and Catherine Ross in that order. It looks like uh, Peter is uh, going uh, fastest now. She's uh, doing a serious effort now. Rika Peter, uh, who are second in the European uh, Championship earlier this year in Bohin. And she's uh, really, really going for it now. Out from the portage. Uh, it's Rika Peto, it's Catherine Rask, and it's uh, Solyam uh, from uh, Hungary. I think you're dead right there, Stefan. And that was a proper effort, wasn't it, to, to try and break that group up? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, she's, she's got, what, three, four lengths, and that's going to cost somebody to catch her up, unless she just calls it a day in the near future and drops back to the other two. But it did look like she had some... It's a balance, uh, balancing thing, uh, how close to the bank you can go. Um, normally, river racing is... Uh, Upstream is very, very close to the banks, but here it's so shallow, so it might be impossible for them to, to do that. There's going to be some very tempting gaps on the inside of groups if you use quite fancy making your way up, but it's a dangerous game to play. Yeah, because it's mud. You can get stuck in the mud. Yeah. Uh, and there, there are some paddlers here who, who spend a lot of time on shallow rivers as well. They, I know Romalo trains on a river in Portugal that can be quite quite shallow. Um, Hank McGregor is most yeah. to shallow rivers oh. from South African racing, I'm sure. Um, and they're two of the big contenders. Absolutely. If you'd really fancy, if Gusto was here, you'd fancy him as one of the main contenders here. It's his kind of river. Uh, they are used to river racing also, also yeah. them. Managed uh, very, very shallow. Uh, back in Perth when the river was shallow, yeah. Gusto ripped that field apart. Yes, yes. Maybe the Spanish are going to enjoy this new condition. I think so. They, they made well. They did well in the cellar this year, and there wasn't much water there. So. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't got a graphic from. I was lying. It, it could be an old one. I was going to give you some very bad information there, but instead of that, we'll watch the two leading C1 women continuing their journey around the course. You're going to have to check in with Jim Rosser at some stage to see how many laps they've got left, because that seems to be something Stefan and I are bordering on incompetent. Finding out how many laps we've got left. So we're treated to long shots of the women's C1. I'm surprised that they're uh, concentrating so much on the C1. We've got two Hungarians in the K1 as well. So it'd be really nice to be a little bit more active in the K1 race. So let's it's not exactly Bohemian here, is it, in terms of view, Stefan, but in terms of atmosphere, I don't think you get anywhere better than here. Exactly. This is, the uh, was uh, some kind of Eden, uh, sound of music area. Uh, this is a normal river and a good one for marathon racing, and we are in Hungary, so the atmosphere around it is great, really, really great. I hope you, we can show you a little bit of it um, later on. Uh, when the television is uh, also showing uh, the grandstand and the big screens and everything here. It's really, really great. So we're facing a big screen that's dangling from a crane that's about 200 meters high. And there's a screen dangled down in front of the stand, which would probably hold, I'm terrible at estimating the stands, but at least a couple of thousand people. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you just don't get stands built for a couple of thousand people at many venues. There's why, why would you build a stand for a couple of thousand when only 200 are going to turn up? But they know their stuff. So we have got a live, a live um, graphic here. Solyon, Peter, Peter and Rask 
Bill, I'm 30 seconds ahead of Kaita Purchase. That's pretty impressive. Kaita Purchase has broken Jula Hart. She's two minutes down. And 30 seconds after that many laps, and she's been that distance behind all the way. It's uh, quite it to Kaita Purchase, but that is impressive. Very impressive. Uh, Uh, Keith Bush is uh, from South Africa that is uh, training in the Max Squad uh, together with um, uh, Lee McGregor uh, in Durban. Uh, that is, uh, they have a sig they have a significant uh, squad there, and it's a significant number of athletes uh, from the McLee uh, squad. Uh, in the, the South African national team. And Keita Purchase is uh, one of them. A lot of countries operate that way. The squads gravitate towards one club, or one club builds up the squad. I know you had in your club, um, in Silkeborg and Maribo. In Denmark, you've got the same situation. In England, we had the Elmwood Canoe Club, which did the same. And it is a group that creates an environment of, of progression and excellence. Absolutely, and it used to be like uh, that, that uh, they have one very good athlete and uh, uh, the other want to be uh, to catch up, we, we catch up with that athlete, so they are starting to train together and development comes. And I think if you train in a group that has expectations of winning, you know, <laughs> comes 